Hey guys, I'm Nisha Homi. Today I'm sharing three healthy, filling and nutrient dense oats recipes ideal to include in your weight loss journey. So let's get started with the recipes. To make the oats chela into a bowl, I'm adding in half cup old fashioned rolled oats. I prefer to use old fashioned rolled oats because they are high in fiber. Into this, I'm adding in some water and I'm allowing the oats to soak for about 15 to 20 minutes. The reason why you need to soak oats is to help release the phytic acid content. Grains like oats has phytates which is a nutrient inhibitor. So now I'm going to soak it for about 15 to 20 minutes. While the oats is getting soaked, let's get the other ingredients ready. I'm using one small tender bottle gourd also known as Loki. Now if you don't have a bottle gourd at hand, the other options are rich gourd or you can even use cucumber. I'm slicing about one fourth of the bottle gourd. I'm peeling the skin of the bottle gourd. Next I'm grating the loki. Transfer the grated loki into a bowl. Into this I am finally slicing in two green chilies. Green chilies you can increase or decrease to suit your taste. Next I am finally slicing in about 7 to 8 uh, shallots. I prefer to use the shallots in my recipes as they are a good source of iron and folate. However, if you don't have shallots at hand, you can use one fourth of an onion instead. Just make sure that you are slicing it as thinly as possible. Shallots are also rich in antioxidants, so I always try to use them in my recipes. Next, I'm finally chopping in a handful of coriander leaves. I'm grating in one fourth of a ginger. And to this, I'm adding in one fourth teaspoon of turmeric powder. Today I'm using Vigon turmeric which has high curcumin content. A fat pinch of freshly ground black pepper powder. Black pepper helps in better assimilation of turmeric. A fat pinch of jeera also known as cumin seeds. I'm just adding the jeera onto my palm and crushing it with my hands like this so that the flavors are released. Jeera not only gives an amazing flavor but also aids in digestion. Pink Himalayan salt as needed and now let's check on the oats. Okay now the oats are nicely soaked and when you take it between your fingers you can easily mash the oats. So that means the oats are nicely soaked. So I'm going to wash and rinse it a couple of times. So what I'm going to do is I'm placing it onto a strainer and then I'll place the strainer under running water. Okay, now the oats are rinsed under running water and I'm transferring the oats into the bowl. Now with my hand, I'm mixing the oats really well into the other ingredients. Since the oats are soaked really well, it will be easy to mix. So this is a very high fiber and filling oats chela. The best part is you can enjoy this any time of the day. You can even make ahead this batter and it will stay good in the refrigerator for up to two days. So this is also an ideal way to meal prep, especially for those busy working people. You can also enjoy this as a filling dinner. No need to add in any extra water since the loki or bottle gourd is tender. It will release water. So there is no need to add any extra water. Now what this grated loki will do to the oats is that it will sort of uh, act like a web and hold together the oats. Oats does not have any gluten but the grated loki will act like a web and hold together the oats and that also prevents the oats from breaking when making into a chila. You can already see the fiber in the grated loki so it will sort of hold like a web and that will hold together the oats. Because the loki is tender it released some water so no need to add in any extra water. Now the beauty of this oats chila batter is that you can make ahead this and store it in the refrigerator and it will stay good in the refrigerator for a couple of days. So that makes this oats chila batter an ideal meal prep especially for those busy working people. 
This oats chila is light on the stomach. It is full of fiber. Hence, it is an ideal meal for dinner. You can also enjoy it any time of the day. And now, let's make the chila. To make the oats chila, I am heating my cast iron tawa. And once the tawa is heated, I am greasing it with wood pressed gingerly oil. Gingerly oil is also known as sesame oil. Reduce the flame to the lowest. Now you can divide the batter into two portions. Take one portion of the oats chila dough and place it onto the cast iron tawa. With your hand, press it into a round circle. You can also use a spoon to spread it out if you are not comfortable using your hands. Drizzle in one teaspoon wood pressed sesame oil. Make sure you drizzle on the sides as well. Cover and let it cook on low flame. Healthy cooking is all about using the right quality of oils. So try to use wood pressed oils of your choice or A to Desi ghee. A couple of minutes later open the lid. Allow it to cook for another minute without the lid. Another minute later, carefully flip it over. Remember that I'm using a well seasoned cast iron tower and now I'm flipping it over. And allow that side to get cooked as well. And once that side is done, remove to a plate. Repeat the same thing with the rest of the batter. Once it has cooled down, it stays soft, hence it is ideal to carry as a lunchbox meal. And my super healthy and filling oats chila is ready to serve. You can enjoy this chila with any homemade pickle or even with vegan raita of your choice. A perfect filling meal for breakfast or for dinner can be enjoyed by those on weight loss journey or those with health issues like thyroid, PCOS and diabetes and also an excellent meal for weight management. To make this oats recipe, I'm using steel cut oats. Steel cut oats are less processed and has more fiber. Into a bowl, I'm adding in one cup steel cut oats. Into this, I'm adding in some water and I'm going to wash and rinse it a couple of times or until the water runs clear. Once rinsed, add some more water and allow it to soak for about 5-6 to six hours. You can also soak it overnight. So I'm going to soak it for about 6 hours. After 6 hours or the next day morning if you have kept it overnight, the steel cut oats are nicely soaked. So I'm going to wash and rinse it a couple of times and then I'm going to keep it on a strainer. I have washed and rinsed it a couple of times and then I have kept it on a strainer. To cook the oats into a saucepan or a sauce pot, add in 2 and 1 fourth cups of water. If you like your oats to be slightly on the runnier side, you can add in up to 2 and a half cups of water. Anyway, between 2 cups to 2 and a half cups would be ideal. Once the water starts to boil, add in pink Himalayan salt as needed. Add in the strained oats, give it a stir and once it starts to boil, cover it with the lid, reduce the flame to the lowest and let it cook on low flame for about 15 to 20 minutes or until the oats are nicely cooked. In between, open the lid and give it a stir. Just to make sure that nothing is sticking to the bottom. You can also at this stage check salt. If you feel you need more salt, you can add in. Cover and let it cook. Also note that uh, oats may start to spill if the lid is very tight and if you are using a smaller pot or a saucepan. So it would be ideal to give little space for the steam to release out. Do not cover it tightly once it has come to a rolling boil. Leave a little gap like this so that the steam releases out and it does not spill over. And after 10 minutes, this is how it looks. I'm just giving it a stir and I'm covering it again and let it cook for another 5 minutes. Another 5 minutes later, that is a total of 15 minutes later, this is how it looks. The oats are now nicely cooked and it has turned into the perfect consistency 
and I'm covering it with the lid. I'm making a tatka and for that I'm heating my tatka pan and once my pan is heated I'm adding in one tablespoon wood pressed groundnut oil. Instead of wood pressed groundnut oil you can use any locally sourced wood pressed oils of your choice like uh, wood pressed uh, coconut oil, thill oil which is also known as sesame oil or mustard oil any wood pressed oils of your choice you can also use desi ghee instead reduce the flame to the lowest and add in half teaspoon jeera also known as cumin seeds and once it splutters add in half teaspoon mustard seeds 1 4 teaspoon homemade asafoetida powder also known as hing 3 to 4 red chilies which I am breaking into 2 and adding in you can increase or decrease red chilies to suit your taste. 1 teaspoon urad dal, 2 to 3 tablespoon peanuts, some fresh curry leaves, 1 fourth teaspoon turmeric powder. Today I am using Vigon turmeric which has high curcumin content and for better assimilation of turmeric I am adding in 1 third teaspoon black pepper powder, freshly ground black pepper powder. And give it a stir. The oats are nicely cooked and of the perfect consistency. Pour the tatka over the oats. Cover immediately so that the flavors are not released. You can serve this hot healthy oats porridge with pickle or any side dish of your choice. You can even have it on its own. Open the lid. Give it a nice stir. And my healthy, mildly spiced oats porridge is ready to serve. To make healthy oat soup, I have taken one third cup of old fashioned rolled oats. Next, I am using two shallots. Shallots, I prefer to use them for their iron and folate. They are also a good source of antioxidants. A small green chilli which I have finely chopped. This is about half of a medium sized green chilli. Green chilli you can increase or decrease as per your taste. Four garlic cloves which I have finely chopped. The vegetables I am using are 1 4th cup carrot. This is a medium sized carrot finely chopped. 1 4th cup green peas. 1 4th cup baby corn. This is three baby corn finely chopped. Instead of baby corn you can use corn kernels or any other vegetable of your choice. 1 4th cup beans. This is about 7 to 8 tender beans finely chopped. So all together I have taken 1 cup of mixed vegetables. Now with regard to vegetables you can use any vegetable of your choice which is available in your locality and is in season. You can also use green leafy vegetables of your choice. I am heating my sauce pot with about 2 to 3 teaspoons of wood pressed coconut oil. Instead of wood pressed coconut oil, you can use any locally sourced wood pressed oils of your choice like wood pressed groundnut oil, mustard oil or even eto desi ghee. So I have added about 3 teaspoons of wood pressed coconut oil. Remember that healthy cooking is all about using the right quality of oils. So try to use wood pressed oils in your diet for your better health. And once the oil is heated lightly swirl the pan and then reduce the flame to the lowest. Into that I am adding in the chopped garlic loaves. Lightly saute the garlic. This will help to infuse the wood pressed coconut oil with the garlic flavor which will help to have a nice garlicky flavor to the vegetable oat soup. And once the garlic starts to turn light golden brown in color, I am thinly slicing in the shallots. Give it a good stir. Shallots are a good source of iron and folate hence I prefer to use them in my recipes. However, if you don't have shallots at hand, you can use 1 to 2 teaspoons of finely chopped onions instead of shallots. And once the shallots are transparent, add in the finely chopped green chilli and give it a good stir. Next add in 1 third cup old fashioned rolled oats and lightly fry the oats on low flame. Frying or soaking the oats is ideal to help remove the phytic acid content in oats. Phytates are nutrient inhibitors which may prevent nutrient absorption. So it's always ideal to either soak the oats or roast the oats 
before cooking. So I'm lightly roasting the oats for about one to two minutes. Remember the flame is on the lowest. And two minutes later, I'm adding in the vegetables. So I'm adding in all the vegetables. Give it a good stir. Add in pink Himalayan salt as needed. Give it a good stir. And allow the vegetables to saute along with the oats for about a minute or two. Two minutes later, I'm adding in one and a half cups of water. Give it a good stir and cover and allow it to come to a boil. While it is getting boiled, I'm freshly grinding half teaspoon whole black pepper corns. Increase or decrease black pepper as per your taste. And once the black pepper is ground, I'm keeping it aside. The addition of freshly ground black pepper in the oats vegetable soup will give it an amazing flavor. So try to use freshly ground black pepper powder. Let's check on the oats. Okay, now the soup has started to boil. At this stage, I'm reducing the flame to the lowest and I'm allowing the oats and vegetables to get cooked for about five to seven minutes on low flame. Five to seven minutes later, open the lid, give it a good stir. I'm just checking whether the vegetables are cooked. So the vegetables are nicely cooked. Into this I'm adding in half teaspoon freshly ground black pepper powder. Give it a good stir. You can increase or decrease black pepper and green chilies as per your taste. Turn off the flame and I'm adding in one capful or about a teaspoon of unpasteurized organic apple cider vinegar. When you're using apple cider vinegar, make sure that you're using the vinegar which has the mother. The mother is actually the healthy gut friendly bacteria. Instead of apple cider vinegar, you can add in juice of half of a lemon. Now I like my soup to be slightly on the thicker side. Hence, uh, I prefer to use one and a half cups of water. But if you want to have a thinner soup, you can add another half cup of water. So you can use a total of two cups of water if you like your soup to be slightly thin. Once it cools down, the soup will slightly thicken and my vegetable oats soup is ready to serve. So I'm gonna transfer to a serving bowl. And lastly, I'm garnishing it with just a pinch of crushed red chili flakes and my healthy oats vegetable soup is ready to serve so guys do try these oats recipes and uh, let me know in the comments which is your favorite thank you for watching and until next time take care bye bye